Welcome you to the call uh, for today. May I request you to kindly assume your seats and we start our day's program.
A very good morning once again. We shall get started with our today's session. Let me start by inviting the Secretariat to make uh, uh, administrative clarifications and then we shall begin on our agenda. Secretariat. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just an update on three documents. Document 13.2 relating to the budget. Our translation team is busy right now making sure that the relevant paragraphs are consistent across all three languages and should be posted uh, within, uh, certainly within the next hour. Second, uh, we have CRP 1, the Gandhi Nagar Declaration. It is now posted in all three languages. We hope to take that up first thing in the afternoon. Third, CRP 26.4.4 on connectivity was briefly posted on the in-session documents, but it has been taken down. So just letting you know if you already downloaded that, uh, you should dispose of that document. A new uh, revised version will be posted shortly. Thank you. Thank you, Secretariat. We shall now begin with our uh, agenda item. I want to suggest that we begin by getting an uh, update from the Credentials Committee. The Chair of Credentials Committee kindly update the meeting. Saudi Arabia, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everyone. The Credentials Committee held its third meeting on Wednesday, 19 February. The meeting was attended by representatives of Malawi, the Netherlands, Saudi Arabia, and Uruguay. The credentials of the following six parties were examined and found to be in order. Kyrgyzstan, New Zealand, North Macedonia, the Netherlands, Palau, and United Arab Emirates. I would like to invite all delegations that have not yet deposited their credentials at the registration desk with the Secretariat to please do so immediately and no later than the close of the committee of the hall this morning to enable the credentials committee to be complete its work as soon as possible. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Saudi Arabia. Let me now invite uh, chairs of the working group to update the meeting on the progress in the respective working groups. I will start with the budget uh, working group. Nora, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Chair, and good morning. Yes, we continue our work. We had a, a continuation yesterday, and we uh, I would say we are on track and we should be able to conclude as agreed today. And it will be, uh, uh, our final meeting is set to be at lunch today from one o'clock. Thank you. Thank you, Nori. Let's hear from uh, Terrestrial Working Group. Chair of the Terrestrial Working Group. Mongolia, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Sorry, keep you waiting. Uh, the Steel Working Group um, had a meeting yesterday, and uh, so far we have only one pending issue on African elephant, and we just had a small um, a group meeting, uh, and uh, countries from uh, countries of the range states agreed to agreed on the text, which we are going to circulate it with the working group members and other colleagues as well. So we will be ready by tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Chair of the Research Working Group. Let's hear from Avian Species Working Group. Uh, the Avian Working Group met last night for the third time. 
We finalise discussions on document 26.1.2, Land Birds, and a conference room paper is being produced. We also had a discussion on the listing proposal for the Little Bustard, clarifying some open questions in relation to the proposal. We still have three outstanding issues to discuss in the following documents, illegal killing, flyways, poisoning. Parties will be meeting in small contact groups during the morning and lunch to discuss alternative wording to open points. And depending on how the contact groups progress, we might have a shorter meeting of the avian working group already during lunch. If yes, this will be announced here in the cow before lunch. And we'll be meeting again in the evening, uh, possibly all night, to conclude the remaining open issues. Thank you. Thank you, Avian Species Working Group. Uh, let's hear from Aquatic Species Working Group. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, Aquatic Working Group uh, met last night and we've concluded um, all of our business. Documents relating to the resolutions and decisions and the concerted actions have all been endorsed. Um, it's not quite the same situation for the listing proposals. The proposal to list the white tipped shark on Appendix 1 um, is supported by the working group. The proposal, there were two proposals for um, listing of the smooth hammerhead shark on Appendix 2. The proposal by Brazil, it's document 27.1.9a, for a regional listing uh, is supported by the working group. But the proposal by the EU, it's 27.1.9b, for a global listing, um, we did not achieve consensus on that, and that will need to be discussed um, in more detail here in the COW. Uh, that's the same situation for 27.1.10, the proposal to list the tope shark on Appendix 2. That will, um, we did not reach consensus on that as well, and you'll need to discuss that in here in more detail. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Avian Species Working Group, and uh, uh, thank you all the working groups for a job well done. I will now invite uh, New Zealand. Uh, New Zealand, we set up uh, a contact group, actually a working group, uh, on interpretation of Article 3 of the Convention. Let me invite New Zealand to report back to the meeting regarding the outcome of the discussions. New Zealand. Thank you, Chair. The contact group yesterday met and had a constructive meeting. We're nearly sorted with a draft. Uh, we're hoping to finalise it shortly, and I don't expect that we'll need a further meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much, New Zealand. Uh, seems good, and uh, we seem to be uh, moving forward. Um, there is uh, an issue of um, appointment of COP appointed councillors. Um, we've received nominations now uh, following the extension of the period for submission of nominations. We now have nominations on each uh, subject area. Uh, some of the subject areas, we have more than one nomination. So we need to set up a contact group, or call it uh, Friends of the Chair, to look through the nominations and advise us on who the COP should appoint as councillors for respective subject areas. If we could achieve consensus in the contact group, that would be our preferred option, so that the COP looks at one single candidate for each subject area. But in case we do not achieve that, we shall see how to go about it. So I wanted to ask uh, I wanted to ask Australia, that has been uh, chairing the working group on this issue, to chair 
our friends of the chair uh, session, but make it open, given that there are interests. You make it open, uh, you sit, look through the received CVs on each subject area, and come back to us with the agreed recommendation, preferably one candidate for each uh, subject area. But in case you fail to achieve that, you will still come back to us and we find a solution. So the Secretariat will announce uh, the room where you can have uh, this meeting to look through the nominations and come back to us. Is that acceptable by the meeting as a way out to resolve the COP appointed councillors? We already have consensus on subject areas, so we are now talking about filling the candidates' positions. Do you have an objection to that proposed way forward? I see no objection, so Australia kindly convene uh, a contact group on this issue and uh, report back to the plenary. I invite uh, all those delegates that have interest in uh, this subject to participate in the working group. Yeah, yeah, I have to make it clear that this is an uh, uh, appointment and so I expect parties only uh, to participate in the working group because this is decision making. It is appointment of candidates, so only party delegates. Thank you. Argentina, you have the floor. Gracias, señor presidente. Argentina quiere ser parte de este grupo. Thank you, Argentina. Yes, uh, all parties interested can participate in the working group. It's open to all parties. So with your indulgence, uh, we shall now move to clearing of CRPs and uh, I want to invite the meeting to consider the report of day one which has been posted and interpreted uh, in all the languages of the convention and has been uh, in the initiation tray for quite some time meeting report of day one, which was Monday 17th, February. Do we have any objection to recommending the report of day one to plenary for adoption? Do we have any objection to this meeting adopting the meeting report of day one I see no objections. I take it that this meeting adopts and recommends the meeting report of uh, day one to plenary for adoption. Thank you. We move to meeting report for day two, Tuesday, 18th February 2020. Do we have any objection? to this meeting adopting the second day meeting report and recommending it to plenary for adoption. I see a European Union. European Union, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so in speaking note, uh, European Union and its member states um, uh, put it uh, also 
uh, Sargassian Sea importance to be included in uh, action plan and uh, uh, that is not uh, reported so uh, we see that is uh, as important uh, thing to to be added into the report thank you Uh, European Union, are you happy to read uh, the text you want added uh, on the floor so that it can be captured in the respective paragraph where you want it? Thank you, Chair. Could you give us uh, five minutes uh, and then come back uh, so we will propose text? Okay, let's stand over it. Uh, let's move to... The next CRP, we shall stand over this CRP. We shall come back to it. Brazil, you have the floor. I see you are requesting for the floor. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Regarding the uh, draft uh, report of the second day, uh, in paragraph 60, it does not reflect exactly what uh, we, we presented, as it says that... Um, this, uh, Brazil was completely against this provision and the, uh, it says that it would face sanctions. What, we're, what we are against is the provision that uh, countries would not be allowed to send meeting documents and not what is already uh, decided uh, in other COPs. And if you want, I can send that uh, by email. Thank you, Brazil. Uh, we stood over uh, this CRP, the day, the day two meeting, so feel free to send uh, uh, the written comments so that they can be incorporated as EU brings theirs. We shall come back to this uh, later in the day. May I invite uh, this meeting to look at uh, CRP 26.1.5, Action Plans for BATS. CRP 26.1.5 on action plans for BADS. I invite this meeting to indicate whether there is objection to adopting CRP 26.1.5. I see no objection. I take it that this meeting agrees to recommend CRP 26.1.5 to plenary for adoption. I now invite the meeting to look at CRP 26.2.1 on important marine mammal areas. <coughs> Do we have any objections to this meeting recommending to plenary for adoption CRP 26.2.1 on important marine mammal areas? I see 
No objection. I take it that this meeting adopts and recommends to plenary for consideration CRP 26.2.1. I invite this meeting to look at CRP 26.2.2 on adverse impacts of anthropogenic noise on cetaceans and other migratory species. I invite this meeting to look at CRP 26.2.2 on adverse impacts of anthropogenic noise on cetaceans and other migratory species. Do we have any objections for this meeting adopting and recommending to plenary for consideration? CRP 26.2.2. I see no objections. I take it that this meeting recommends to plenary for consideration CRP 26.2.2. I invite the meeting to look at CRP 26.2.5 on marine wildlife watching. Do you have any objections to this meeting adopting CRP 26.2.5 on marine wildlife watching? I do not see any objection. I take it that this meeting adopts and recommends to plenary for consideration CRP 26.2.5. I now invite the meeting to look at CRP 26.2.8 on live capture of cetaceans from the wild for commercial purposes. Do we have any objections to this meeting adopting CRP 26.2.8 on live capture of cetaceans from wild for commercial purposes? I do not see any objections. I take it that this meeting adopts and recommends to plenary for consideration CRP 26.2.8. Mm -hmm. I now invite the meeting to look at CRP 26.2.9 on a European eel. Do we have any objections to this meeting adopting CRP 26.2.9 and recommending it to plenary for consideration? I see no objections. I take it that this meeting adopts CRP 26.2.9 and recommends it to plenary for consideration. I invite the meeting to look at CRP 26.2.10 on global program of work for cetaceans. Do we have any objections to this meeting adopting CRP 26.2.10 on global program of work for cetaceans? I see no objections. I take it that this meeting adopts and recommends to plenary for consideration CRP 
I now invite the meeting to look at CRP 14.2, Rev 1. We did discuss this matter yesterday briefly, and uh, there was addition of uh, a text in uh, decision 13 BB, paragraph B, uh, which starts with uh, including the possibility of establishing a working group as suggested by Republic of South Africa. I now come back to you to consider adopting CRP 14.2 Rev 1. I see a European Union. Thank you very much, Chair, for giving us the floor. Uh, we reflected on the comments made by South Africa yesterday, and indeed uh, the paragraph only considered the options for a follow-up of the strategic plan, and in the way what they suggested, uh, we also considered the options on the follow-up on the way forward that we have to work. And to be consistent in, uh, in line with the proposal, not to preempt the options, we would also like to, to not to preempt the follow-up, so our proposal would be that to include the text that says after considering, taking into account the experience from the development of the current strategic plan for migratory species 2015 to 2023, and then it continues in regards to available options for a follow-up. And then we would not include the text that was uh, proposed to be added in the regards of the establishment of the working group. In this way, we also leave the process uh, and the way forward open uh, to be able to choose the best, best available possible ways forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, EU. Do you have any further requests for the floor on this subject? South Africa. Thank you, Chair. I think a reflection to the experience and the development of the previous strategic plans will be a, an acceptable option and a, an acceptable proposal because of the experience that we had in the development of such strategic plans, which was facilitated very well uh, by the operations of the working group at an intersessional level because we had uh, enough chance to look at the developments, international developments that were supposed to be incorporated in the strategic plan. So the, the, this gives an exercise again to the secretary to review the processes that were followed in the past in the development of the existing strategic plan and looking at the best practices and the lessons that were learned from such processes. Thank you. Thank you, South Africa. I will now invite uh, EU to submit uh, the... May I invite EU to read uh, the proposed text on CRP 14.2, Rev 1. Thank you very much, Chair, and thank you very much for South Africa for accepting this as a way forward. The text would read, after uh, in the 13BB, little b, consider, comma, taking into account the experiences from the development of the current strategic plan for migratory species 2015-2023. And the rest of the text goes as is proposed in the paragraph. 
of course, with the deletion of assertion from yesterday that says including the possibility of the establishment a working group. This text would be deleted and the proposed text would be included. Thank you. I open the floor if there is any objection to the proposed text for 13 BB paragraph B. Do you have any objections to the addition of that text? I see no uh, objection. Now I come back to you. Um, do we have any objection to this meeting adopting CRP 14.2, uh, Rev 1, as amended for recommendation to plenary for consideration? I see no objection. I take it that this meeting adopts CRP 14.2, Rev 1, as amended, and recommends it to the plenary for consideration. We shall now go into um, interpretation and implementation of the convention. And uh, this is mainly proposals for amendment of appendices to the convention. All parties that have submitted proposals uh, should be mindful of the time limitation to introduce the proposals. I will propose a maximum of three minutes uh, to each proponent to introduce their proposal, and then we open the floor for discussion. So I invite the meeting to look at uh, agenda item 27.1.1, proposal for the inclusion of the mainland Asian elephant, or call it Indian elephant, in Appendix 1 of the Convention. I invite India to introduce the proposal. India, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. India is home to 60% of the Asian elephant global population and therefore India has a primary duty and responsibility for ensuring survival of Asian elephants. Mainland Asian elephants bar Indian elephants are large social, intelligent, endangered and long-ranging migratory animal that migrate over long distances in search of food, shelter across states and countries. Uh, mainland Asian elephant or Indian elephants are known since time immemorial to migrate to neighboring countries like Nepal, Bangladesh, Bhutan, probably to Myanmar also. Historically, Asian elephants range from West Asia to uh, north of Yangtze River in China. Presently, the population is limited to 13 elephant range countries. The estimated population of Elephas Maximus Indicus in wild is estimated at 44,500 to 47,835, and in captivity about 14,440 to 14,640 in the range countries. India has also a wild population of 29,964 as per the latest estimation, along with around 3,000 captive elephants in India. Mr. Chair, Conservation of Asian elephants has been a challenge in most of the elephant range states. Habitat loss, fragmentation, poaching, illegal trade of elephants and human-elephant conflict are the reasons that threaten the survival of this species. With habitat loss, fragmentation or degradation, the affected elephants come into conflict and getting up killed in retaliatory action or are captured and removed to mitigate conflict. More than 600 humans and 450 elephant lives are lost in Asian region, most of which is in, the, in India and Sri Lanka. 
Mainland Asian elephant, Indian elephant is also listed as the endangered in the UCN red list, as well as in the CITES Appendix 1. In India, we have given elephant as a scheduled one animal and the highest protection status. It's also our natural national heritage animal. We have 30 elephant reserves spread over 61,000 square kilometers, managed scientifically through proper management plans. Mr. Chair, in view of the aforesaid reasons, the amendment to place mainland Asian elephant in Appendix 1 of the CMS will fulfill natural urge of migration of Indian elephants across borders and back safely, therefore thereby promoting conservation of this endangered species for our future generation. Intermixing of smaller subpopulations in Nepal, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Myanmar will widen the gene pool of this population. It will also help to reduce human elephant conflict in many parts of the migratory ranges. Problems and opportunities for conservation or coexistence are diverse in every elephant range states. Through dialogue and cooperation, exchange of ideas and joint transboundary cooperation action could address many problems. The future of Asian elephants depends on our ability of our governments and people to combine the insights of science and effective governance and an ecologically aware people. Chair, India also proposes to take up concerted action for the elephant, Asian elephants. We propose to initiate a process for development of an agreement between Asian range countries especially, and other stakeholders to achieve the goals and objectives, especially tackling obstacles, barriers of natural migration, prohibiting deliberate killing or capturing of elephants, conserving and restoring their habitats, regulating the human elephant conflicts, regulating control of illegal trade in live elephants and their body parts, and promoting uh, international cooperation in exchange of data, information, capacity building studies, etc. India is of the opinion that development of an agreement among Asian elephant range countries and its successful implementation is also expected to lead to improved cooperation and experience sharing among the, among the range states for conservation of other endangered species of animals and plants and their habitat. Improvement of living conditions of communities living in backward and border areas through reduced human elephant conflicts will also be an important benefit of this listing. Mr. Chair, India would request the, this convention to approve the proposal for inclusion of mainland Asian elephant, Indian elephant, Elephas Maximus Indicus in Appendix 1 of CMS. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, India. I now invite the meeting to discuss the proposal by India to include mainland Asian elephants in CMS Appendix 1. I recognize Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. As this is the first time Sri Lanka are taking the floor. We thank the government of India for their kindness, kind of hospitality. We also congratulate uh, Ms. Amy Frank for the appointment of the appointment and congratulate you, Mr. Chair, on excellence chairmanship. Though this is not affected the, the subspecies of Velifus Maximus Maximus, Sri Lankan government is fully support for the proposal presented by the India for conserving the high endangered highly endangered annual species in the region. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you for the proposal to, uh, submitted by India. Asian elephant is a critical indigenous in Bangladesh, and the number of Asian elephant in Bangladesh is 210 to 330 in resident, and migratory elephant is 79 to 107. It is very much sensitive issue, and human and elephant conflict is a very crucial issue in Bangladesh. So this elephant should be included in the Appendix 1. Uh, Bangladesh support this program. But side by side, concerted action should be taken in considering the community people. That is the involving of community people so that human elephant conflict can be minimized. And the alternative crop cropping system or alternate income generation opportunity should be included in concerted action. 
So it will in, uh, ensure the conservation of Asian elephant in conflicted area like Bangladesh. And uh, Myanmar also uh, should be included in here, especially uh, in our country recently, Rohingya influx created the problem, human elephant conflict in our country. And uh, Myanmar, I, I request Myanmar to uh, consider the uh, uh, elephant conservation in uh, Asia, especially elephant corridor. Transboundary elephant corridor should be open for uh, free migration of uh, Asian elephant. Thank you. Thank you, Bangladesh. Uh, let's take a European Union. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The EU and its member states would like to thank the government of the, our host, the Government of the Republic of India, for submitting this document. The EU and its member states strongly support inclusion of the mainland Asian Indian mainland Asian elephant in CMS Appendix 1. Being classified as endangered by IUCN, Asian elephant faces many threats today across its range, such as habitat loss and fragmentation, illegal killing, poaching, conflicts with humans, etc. As mega herbivores, elephants have a significant impact on their habitat, which consequently impacts many other species. Without this iconic species, the ecosystems will be dramatically different or cease to exist altogether. Therefore, strengthening of international protection and enhancement of international cooperation for conservation of elephants and their habitats will have great conservation benefits. Thank you, EU. I see Aifa. Thank you, Chair. I'm making this intervention on behalf of the Born Free Foundation, I4, WCS, and WWF. We appreciate the submission of this proposal by India and urge parties to adopt it. We are aware that a case has been made for inclusion of the island populations, but not all of these can be considered migratory, and given this, we understand India's conservative approach. The proposal recognizes that transboundary cooperation for conservation of the Asian elephant has to be strengthened between mainland range countries. We agree with the Scientific Council's comments, especially regarding the importance of CITES decisions and actions for this species. While habitat loss and fragmentation and human elephant conflict continue to represent the key challenges facing Asian elephant conservation, the trade in Asian elephant skins and skin products has emerged as a new threat that must be addressed. We hope that range states in implementing this listing will address this emerging threat and follow up as necessary in the context of combating wildlife trafficking and CITES. Mr. Chair, we believe that this proposal will provide a framework that will catalyze conservation efforts for the Asian elephant that are urgently needed to protect the individuals which move across international borders, particularly through the intent to form a range state agreement as presented in the accompanying concerted action proposal. We urge parties to support this proposal. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Aifa. Let's have Humane Society, followed by Younger Naturalist Network. Kindly make your submissions very brief, especially if there are statements in support, and then forward the uh, full statements for inclusion in the report. Thank you, Chair. I'm making this intervention on behalf of Humane Society International India and on behalf of Humane Society International around the globe. We are proud to support the proposal by the government of India and urge the parties of CMS to support the inclusion of this majestic mainland Asia elephant in Appendix 1. As an organization which works on mitigating human elephant conflict and on the prevention of cruelty to captive elephants, we fully appreciate the benefits of this firm endeavor by the Indian government. Elephants are not only the creators and keepers of forests, but also are revered in our culture, history, and mythology. Ensuring they continue to inhabit the forest they protect without coming in com conflict with human beings is of utmost importance. With 3,500 elephants in captivity, as mentioned in the proposal, the listing in Appendix 1, encouraging human-elephant coexistence, will further prevent new captures and a life in cruel captivity. Human-elephant conflict is a pressing issue, and uplist uplisting the Asian elephant to Appendix 1 and its consequential binding agreements towards concerted action will result in important conservation outcomes. Therefore, we respectfully urge all the range countries to work together and agree upon the concerted action plan. Chair, we are pleased to note the concerted action proposed by the Indian government, which undertakes to reduce human-animal conflict, along with facilitating 
natural migration, prohibiting capture of elephants, conserving, improvement, improving elephant habitat, and controlling illegal trade of elephants. We commit to working with the government of India to support the concerted action plans that follow this decision. Thank you for listening. Young naturalist. Thank you, Chair. Uh, we would like to support government of India's proposal uh, in concern of Asian elephant uh, conservation. Uh, we will uh, submit our detail to Secretariat in this matter. Thank you. Thank you, INN. Uh, COP appointed councillor. I see request. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, although the um, proposal limits itself to the mainland population of Asian elephants, I would just flag up to the room for those who are not aware that one of the island populations, that on Borneo, um, does in fact is transboundary between uh, Sabah in Malaysian Borneo and Kalimantan in Indonesian Borneo. Uh, sadly, neither of those countries are yet parties, but when they join us in the room, I hope the door will be open to adding that population to this uh, listing. Thank you. Thank you for the comments. Uh, they will be uh, taken note of. I haven't had any views um, opposing inclusion of uh, mainland Asian elephant in uh, CMS Appendix 1. So I put the question to this meeting now, uh, whether we have any objections to this meeting adopting the proposal to include uh, mainland Asian elephant in CMS Appendix 1 and recommending the proposal to plenary for uh, consideration. Do we have any objection? To adopting the proposal and recommending it to plenary. I do not see any objection, so the proposal is unanimously agreed and recommended to plenary for consideration. We shall move to agenda item 27.1.2, proposal for the inclusion of the Jaguar in Appendix 1 and 2 of the Convention. I invite uh, a representative of proponents. We have Costa Rica, Argentina, Bolivia, Paraguay, Peru, and Uruguay agree on one of you to introduce the proposal and kindly stick to the three minutes rule. The proposal has been saturated. All delegates have already read the content, so just highlight the proposal in three minutes. I see Costa Rica. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Argentina, Bolivia, Paraguay, Perú, Uruguay y Costa Rica presentamos la propuesta de inclusión del jaguar pantera onca en los apéndices 1 y 2 de la CMS. El jaguar es el felino más grande del continente americano y el tercer felino más grande del mundo con un rango de distribución que va desde Estados Unidos hasta Argentina. Como depredadores en la cima de la cadena trófica, las poblaciones viables del jaguar son esenciales para los esfuerzos regionales que buscan mantener la salud y biodiversidad de los ecosistemas. Sin embargo, Las poblaciones del jaguar están actualmente amenazadas por la destrucción del hábitat, la pérdida de corredores migratorios, la caza furtiva en el área de distribución y el tráfico ilegal de productos y subproductos. El hábitat del jaguar ha disminuido por del 40 al 50% de su rango total desde 1900. En Centroamérica ha disminuido 77%. Además, el jaguar está casi ausente en Estados Unidos y extinto en Uruguay y El Salvador. Señores delegados, es importante decirles que la propuesta cumplió con todas las recomendaciones del Comité Científico de la CMS y la consulta con la UICN fue incluida en el adendum 2 de la propuesta. Por lo tanto, el jaguar cumple 
con los criterios para su inclusión en el apéndice 1. Un análisis realizado utilizando los criterios de la UICN concluyó que de las 34 subpoblaciones aisladas de la especie, 33 cumplen con los criterios para ser categorizadas como en peligro o peligro crítico, debido a su pequeño tamaño de la población, fragmentación de su hábitat y la alta densidad de población humana en las áreas circundantes. Además de los 21 países dentro del rango histórico de distribución del jaguar, 13 consideran que el jaguar está en peligro de extinción. El jaguar cumple con la definición de migración del texto de la Convención. Dos tipos predecibles de movimientos en el transcurso de sus vidas. El primero es la dispersión que ocurre como juveniles al establecer su propio tamaño y el segundo es el desplazamiento dentro de los rangos de, los hogar, de sus hogares a lo largo de toda su vida. El jaguar viaja regularmente en busca de presa o pareja. Se han identificado 26 poblaciones transfronterizas, donde todos los movimientos regulares del jaguar se dan sobre las fronteras internacionales comunes, involucrando a los 19 estados del área de distribución actual. A pesar de las iniciativas existentes para la conservación del jaguar, los desafíos siguen siendo altos y requieren un conjunto de herramientas para enfrentar las amenazas directas e indirectas. Dada la importancia de mantener las áreas y los corredores con alta densidad de jaguar, la coordinación adicional entre los estados del área de distribución es vital para la estabilidad y la conectividad de las poblaciones en todo el rango de distribución. La CMS juega un papel clave para la conservación de las especies y sus hábitats, y hoy necesitamos que también lo sea para los jaguares. Su inclusión en, el, en los apéndices de la CMS complementarían otros esfuerzos de otras convenciones mediante la coordinación de respuesta a otras amenazas antropogénicas. Por lo tanto, Argentina, Bolivia, Paraguay, Perú, Uruguay y Costa Rica nos hemos unido para presentar esta propuesta e instamos a las partes a que nos apoyen para su inclusión en los apéndices 1 y 2 de la CMS. El jaguar no puede esperar más. Somos sus representantes y su voz. El momento es ahora. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Thank you very much, Costa Rica. I now invite uh, comments uh, from uh, delegates on the proposal. I see Switzerland followed by Panama. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Switzerland has with concern taken note of the increased evidence for trafficking in Chagra parts and the widespread forest fires in the Amazon basin last year, threatening the core range of the jaguar and its prey. Considering that all jaguar populations outside the Amazon complex are strongly fragmented and small, considered to be endangered or even critically endangered, and that maintaining connectivity between all populations is a crucial objective for the long-term conservation of the species, this requiring coordinated transboundary action, we are convinced that listing the species under the Convention on Migratory Species is greatly justified. Switzerland therefore supports the proposal of Costa Rica and co-proponents. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Switzerland. Panama. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. En nombre del gobierno de Panamá, queremos agradecer al gobierno de la India por haber, no, por haber asumido la COP13 y por su hospitalidad. Además, felicitarle por su gestión y a los demás miembros que conforman la mesa principal. En nombre del Gobierno de Brasil, Ecuador y Panamá, que apoyamos la presente propuesta, hemos identificado que el problema del jaguar es una realidad observada en toda su área de distribución, desde conflictos que involucran pérdida económica por interacción con especies domésticas, así como, y en mayor importancia, la pérdida de la especie en un futuro no muy lejano por posibles factores genéticos. Valorando la importancia de esta especie, se reconoce que dentro de nuestros ecosistemas, el jaguar es el felino más grande de América, representando una de las especies migratorias. Enfatizando que la conectividad es de muy alta importancia para nuestra misión de conservación, reconocemos que la situación del jaguar en nuestros países 
sigue siendo la determinada en los planes de conservación y el desarrollo de todo tipo de acciones para evitar su pérdida, como el tráfico del espécimen, sus elementos constitutivos y recursos genéticos. Es por ello que consideramos que la propuesta cumple los principios fundamentales descritos en el texto de la Convención y que la inclusión de la especie en el apéndice 1 y 2 nos permitirá mayores compromisos y sinergias en el desarrollo de estrategias efectivas para futuras acciones concertadas, por lo que muy amablemente solicitamos a las partes su colaboración de forma positiva a la propuesta de inclusión a los dos apéndices de este felino tan importante en la cadena trófica y recuperación de los ecosistemas. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you, Panama. Let's have European Union. Thank you, Chair. The EU and its member states would like to thank the governments of Costa Rica, Argentina, Bolivia, Peru, Paraguay, and Uruguay for submitting this proposal. The EU and its member states support inclusion of the jaguar in both CMS appendices. Current species range, compared to its historical range, is severely fragmented and continues to decline. Consequently, this leaves the jaguar subpopulations fragmented and isolated, with all but one of them being classified as endangered or critically endangered on national or regional level. Therefore, we believe it is essential to preserve connectivity between these subpopulations across Central and South American countries, and CMS is a very good international instrument to do so. It's very important to design and preserve these potential corridors focused on maintaining connectivity between patches of habitat suitable for the species. Even though the species already has strong national and international protection, the challenges of maintaining strong conservation efforts are high and require an adequate set of tools to address threats to species survival. We believe that inclusion of the jaguar in the CMS appendices will help international cooperation and coordination better protection of subpopulations with transboundary corridors, and will prioritize corridor management to avoid extinction of more isolated populations. Thank you. Thank you, EU. Let's take India. Thank you, Chair. India welcomes the proposal submitted for listing Panthera onca on Appendices 1 and 2 of the Convention on the Conservation of Migratory Species by Republic of Costa Rica, Republic of Argentina, Bolivia, Republic of Paraguay, Republic of Peru, and Oriental Republic of Uruguay. India expresses concern about the jaguar populations which are currently threatened by habitat destruction, loss of migratory corridors, and poaching across their range. India firmly believes that by listing of this particular species in appendices as proposed will help save this endangered species in their existence. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, India. Let's hear from Australia, followed by Senegal. Thank you, Chair. Um, Australia would like to thank the governments of Costa Rica, Argentina, Bolivia, Paraguay, Peru and Uruguay for submitting the listing proposal for Jaguar on Appendix 1 and 2 of the appendices of the Convention. We would particularly like to applaud the Government of Costa Rica for their additional comments that they submitted in an addendum on their listing proposal in response to Scientific Council comments on the listing proposal. It was a um, it was a really robust and well-documented um, document that, that clearly addressed Scientific Council concerns that were raised during its review of the proposal. And um, it's exactly what I think Scientific Council was looking for and what parties were looking for when they agreed to um, instigate this new process that would allow listing proponents to address comments from Scientific Council prior to COP, having the discussions here at COP. So, so um, we'd like to applaud Costa Rica for that and we think it's an exemplary example moving forward of what other listing proponents could, could aim to do in future. Thank you. We'd like to support the proposal. Thank you, Australia. Let's take Senegal. 
Euh, merci, Monsieur le Président. Euh, le jaguar est un animal emblématique et d'après les auteurs de euh, cette proposition d'inscription dans les annexes 1 et 2 de la CMS, son aire de répartition est fortement menacée et dégradée, fragmentée. À ce propos, nous soutenons fortement son inscription, ne serait-ce que même pour enrichir le capital de biodiversité que nous allons léguer à nos descendants. Je pense qu'il serait dommage que nos petits-enfants ne connaissent pas ce fabuleux félin. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Senegal. Let's take United Kingdom. Thank you, Chair. The UK welcomes the proposal to list this flagship South American species. We are encouraged that proposal comes from a number of range states, and given the conservation status of Jaguar in many subpopulations, we hope that this proposal will lead to concerted action across borders to improve connectivity for Jaguars and improve the conservation status of these populations. We particularly welcome the additional evidence provided by range states in response to scientific council comments in regards to the movement of the jaguar across national jurisdictional board, uh, boundaries. The UK government is committed to tackling the illegal wildlife trade um, uh, products. Recognizing the threat to jaguars, we have supported a number of projects through our illegal wildlife trade challenge fund specifically aimed at improving the capacity to tackle the illegal killing and trade of jaguar including projects in Guatemala, Belize, and Bolivia. These projects aim to improve the legal framework and improve cross-border and cross-sector coordination, as well as improving livelihoods in rural communities along wildlife tra trafficking routes. We also note that this proposal aligns well with the decisions adopted at CIT by CITES parties at COP18 on Jaguar conservation, aimed at strengthening cooperation mechanisms on a local, national, and regional level to reduce the threats of, uh, to the connectivity of its habitats. The UK therefore supports the inclusion of Jaguar on Appendix 1 and 2 of the Convention. Thank you. Thank you, UK. Nigeria. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, for proper conservation and uh, protection of this species and uh, its parts, or their parts, uh, listing the species in Appendix 1 and 2 of the Convention will definitely go a very long way in protecting uh, and conserving this species. And so, therefore, Nigeria supports the proposal to, for the jaguars to be listed in Appendix 1 and 2. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Nigeria. We shall take Iswatin, and uh, unless we have... Uh, dissenting views, we shall close uh, the interventions because we are working behind the schedule. So I will encourage uh, dissenting views. So far we've had uh, all the views in favor of the proposal. So I will take Iswatin and thereafter close uh, uh, the floor for those who are expressing support and uh, invite uh, dissenting views. Iswatin. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, since I'm speaking for the first time, I would like to commend India for hosting this very important meeting. We from the Kingdom of Eswatin would like to request your valuable support for the adoption of the proposal submitted by Costa Rica, Argentina, Bolivia, Paraguay, and the rest of the other countries. The jaguar is the largest felidae species and the only living member of the genus Panthera, native to the Americas. Currently, jaguar ranges across 19 countries, uh, from southern United States to northern Argentina. The species occupants, however, has declined to 51% of its historical range over the past century. Therefore, the kingdom of Eswatini would like to support the forwarded proposal by all the other member states. Thank you. Thank you, Iswatin. I will take uh, WCS, CIC, and IFAO strictly one minute uh, to express support and then submit written statements. WCS. Thank you, Chair. WCS greatly appreciates the proposal submitted by the six range states to include the Jaguar on Appendices 1 and 2, and we strongly urge its adoption by the parties. 
The jaguar is an emblematic species of the Americas. Due to its importance in maintaining natural landscapes and ecosystem functionality, and as an important element of indigenous cultures for centuries. I would like to thank all of the parties for their supportive interventions. WCS works to preserve jaguars in a set of globally significant, strategically located jaguar conservation units that contribute to range wine conservation of the species. We work in eight countries in multiple biomes from the Selva Maya through the Amazon to the Chaco. Today, more than any time in history, the jaguar is threatened by habitat loss, direct persecution, and declines in prey populations, and poaching for jaguar parts is increasing. I won't go into all the details on why it qualifies. We've heard so much from, the, from all of the wonderful interventions. CMS, the only international treaty devoted exclusively to the conservation of migratory species, is well placed to heed the call from these rain states of the jaguar and agree to steps to save this culturally and ecologically significant species so that their roar across the forests and grasslands of the Americas will never be silenced. Thank you. Thank you, WCS, for sticking to the one minute rule. I uh, very much appreciate CIC. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> As this is the first time that I'm taking the floor, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the Government of India and to the State of Gujarat and its people for their warm welcome and hospitality and exemplary organization and hosting of this CMS COP. I would also like to congratu congratulate you on your excellent chairing of the co. To start, the CIC would like to highlight that the CITES COP18 has recently agreed that parties should recognize the jaguar as the flagship species of its range countries so that protection and conservation of the species and its habitat becomes a joint pr uh, priority. This is something that the CIC highly welcomes. Having said this, the CIC does not support an Appendix 1 listing for reasons that I wish to highlight below. So firstly, the current IUCN red list classifies the jaguar as only near threatened globally. While many subpopulations are considered endangered or critically endangered at national levels, it is the largest population over uh, all the range of the jaguar, the one in the Amazon basin that cannot be determined as meeting the CMS Appendix 1 listing requirements. However, as there have been more than 20 transboundary populations identified in the Americas, where movement across international borders is probably common, an Appendix 2 listing might be warranted that could enhance the species conservation uh, status via international cooperation. Therefore, the CIC does support an Appendix 2 listing. In addition, with a relatively large number of range countries being non-CMS parties, this ra raises significant implementation problems. The CIC would, pro would propose that IUCN und undertakes a proper red list status review of the Jaguar in the forthcoming intercessional period, uh, and that the new assessment could then provide a properly reviewed and sound scientific basis for any subsequent proposal for Appendix 1 listing, if considered appropriate, to be submitted at the 14 CMS COP. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, CIC. IFA. Gracias, Presidente. Hago esta intervención en nombre de las siguientes organizaciones. IFA, Born Free, Defenders of Wildlife, Human Society International, Natural Resources Defense Council, and World Wildlife Fund. Nuestras organizaciones desean felicitar a los proponentes para presentar una propuesta integral por presentar una propuesta integral que incluye en la enmienda que corresponde a las preguntas formuladas por el Consejo Científico. Es raro que las propuestas de inclusión lleguen a la CMS con tantos proponentes. Esta es una propuesta verdaderamente regional. Como ya hemos visto por medio de, del apoyo expresado por los países del área de distribución del jaguar justo hace unos minutos y por el trabajo más amplio que estos mismos países han estado realizando en otros foros para proteger al jaguar. También acogemos el amplio apoyo que esta propuesta ha recibido de países de todo el mundo. Quizás más que cualquier otra especie terrestre en las Américas, los jaguares representan la necesidad de una cooperación internacional concertada para asegurar su supervivencia y de manera crucial su persistencia en el área de distribución actual. Mantener la capacidad de los jaguares para moverse entre poblaciones que están fragmentadas y también aisladas es fundamental en este esfuerzo, particularmente para las 26 poblaciones transfronterizas que han sido identificadas por varios investigadores. Muchas gracias, Presidente. Thank you, IFAO. Let's take uh, YNN. Thank you, Chair. 
YNN would like to support that proposal, which is moved by uh, government of Costa Rica, Argentina, Bolivia, Paraguay, Peru, and uh, Uruguay. And I would like to support uh, the proposal from YNN uh, that Jaguar is a very endemic and uh, beautiful animal. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, YNN. I now come back to you uh, as a meeting. I have not had any consenting views, uh, dissenting views from any party. Uh, I come back to you, the meeting. Do we have any objections uh, to inclusion of Jaguar in Appendix 1 and 2 of the Convention? Do you have any objections to adoption of the proposal to include Jaguar in Appendix 1 and two of the convention. I do not see any objection. Uh, I will take it that it is agreed that this meeting adopts the proposal and recommends it plenary for consideration. We are extremely behind the schedule, I beg the indulgence of uh, distinguished delegates to make your interventions absolutely precise uh, by expressing whether you support or you don't support, and then submit uh, the detailed uh, statements for inclusion in the meeting report, kindly, of course with the exception of uh, proponents. Let's take proposal uh, in uh, Agenda 27.1.3 on inclusion of the URIO in Appendix 2 of the Convention. I invite uh, the proponents to pick uh, one party from Tajikistan, Iran, or Uzbekistan to introduce the document. I see Uzbekistan uh, kindly introduce document 27.1.4.3, sorry, document 27.1.3, Uzbekistan. Chair. Thank you, Chair. The government of Tajikistan, Iran, Uzbekistan prepared a joint proposal for the inclusion of the URIEL uh, OV signe in Appendix 2 of CMS. Since our, since our proposal is not following Wilson and Reader, 2005, which is the taxonomic reference for mammals adopted under CMS. And in order to clarify the taxonomic scope of the listing, we propose to include the following annotation uh, in the appendix. Correspond, corresponds to always areas Wilson and Reader 2005, only wild population in Afghanistan, India, Iran, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, Pakistan, and Uzbekistan, except for hybrid population. Uriel are known to migrate over distances of several 10 to more than 100 kilometers. Range states for Uriel are India, Iran, Kazakhstan, Pakistan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan. The current population in Uzbekistan might be in the range of less than 200 Uriels, likely <coughs> seasonally varying due to migrations. No increase in uh, observed numbers is observed, is, uh, and locally, uh, locally low numbers make the uh, sp species highly uh, sus susceptible to local extinction. Main threats to Uriel are poaching, capture of lambs, lambs as pets and for sale, competition with the domestic livestock and habitat degradation, domestic dogs, transformation of habitat by uh, deforestation, changing of land use, crop cultivation, extractive industries, uh, urban and infrastructure development. Uh, the listing of Uriel uh, Uriel, always beginning in Appendix 2 of the CMS, will allow for its inclusion in uh, Central Asia Mammal Initiative and the related program of work. It will, by this, enhance national and sub-national conservation efforts for the species and complement this by multilateral and bilateral activities. Listing of Uriel in Appendix 2 of CMS will particularly 
particularly facilitate conservation action for the migration of barriers to migration, including the modification of uh, border fences and the conservation of transboundary populations of the species and their habitats. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Uzbekistan, and thank you for sticking to the three minutes rule. We shall start, of course, cutting off the mic uh, for any interventions uh, of proponents beyond the, the three minutes rule. And I appreciate that you've used exactly two minutes and 30 seconds, so congratulations. I will now open the floor for discussion of the proposal to include URIO in Appendix 2 to the Convention. I recognize the European Union. Thank you, Chair. To be brief, I will just say that the European Union and its member states support the listing of this species on Appendix 2 of the Convention and consequently the potential inclusion of the species in the Central Asian Mammals Initiative. We would also like to take this opportunity to note the importance of ensuring coherence between CMS and CITES taxonomy. Um, I will send a slightly longer written statement. Thank you very much, EU, uh, for understanding. I kindly appreciate the spirit. Let me invite India. Thank you, Chair. We welcome the proposal submitted by Tajikistan, Iran, and Uzbekistan for listing Urial in Appendix 2 to the Convention of the Migratory Species. Urial in different subspecies are available in this area. India is also having Ovis vigne vigne in the Ladakh region of our country. The species found in India is already brought within the ambit of the Schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act. And we want that the species proposed by the proponents are highly endangered and we support the proposal submitted by them, thinking that the, this proposal will actually help in conservation of the species in the areas that they are found now. So India supports this proposal. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, India, for supporting the proposal. I come back to the meeting. Do we have any dissenting views? Do we have any party objecting to inclusion of Urio in Appendix 2 to the Convention? Any party that is objecting the proposal? I see none. Do I take it that it is uh, the agreement of this meeting to recommend to plenary for consideration of the proposal to include Urio in Appendix 2 of the Convention. It seems to be the case. Uh, it is so decided. May I now invite India to introduce a proposal in document 27.1.4 on inclusion of the great Indian bastard in Appendix 1 to the Convention. India, please. Thank you, Chair. The great Indian bustard, Arteodes nigriceps, is a critically endangered species with a very small population existing now. This population we share with our neighboring country, a CMS partner, Pakistan. The great Indian bustard exhibits local seasonal movements. The seasonally fluctuating numbers in both the countries indicate transboundary movements. The current population size is about 150 birds or less in India. The government of India has been taking appropriate steps for the conservation and protection of the GIB, which we call in short, including the accordance of legal protection under the Wildlife Protection Act. We have also started a focused project titled Habitat Improvement and Conservation Breeding of the Great Indian Bustard. The CMS proposal can help to find a guiding framework to convince the concerned agencies to take up the proposed actions. The proposed amendment to list the GIB in Appendix 1 of the CMS will help in better understanding about the transboundary movement of the birds and protection of the species against hunting and other human-induced mortality risks. 
Chairperson, India also proposes to take up a concerted action for the great Indian bustard. The concerted action proposes various action for conservation of the GIB. This includes understanding seasonal variation, habitat used by the species, review existing and upcoming developmental projects that may impact the GIB to inform the advocacy strategy using scientific organizations and civil society organizations. For soliciting support in large, we have made the species the mascot of the COP, which is looking right from the screen to all of us. The listing of proposal in the concerted action plan is an effort to save the most endangered species now in India, and the proposal exhorts range countries to take immediate steps for losing the species from the land where it is found. We exhort all the parties who are present here to support the proposal to save this beautiful bird from extinction. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, India. I will now open the floor for comments on the proposal to include the great Indian bastard in Appendix 1 to the Convention. And I must remind you that we shall be enforcing the one-minute rule. Saudi Arabia, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Saudi Arabia would like to support this proposal. Uh, we have a similar species in Saudi Arabia, and I think uh, all uh, the, uh, the, the group, the group uh, or the genus is, is in uh, real need of uh, concerted actions and, uh, and uh, conservation efforts. So we very much uh, support this uh, proposal, and we wish to uh, uh, learn from the experiences uh, our colleagues in India uh, have on, in uh, conserving the species. Thank you. Thank you, Saudi Arabia, a European Union. Thank you, Chair. The great Indian bustard is a critically endangered species with an extremely small population and restricted range. Although its migration is poorly understood, it exhibits local seasonal movements between India and Pakistan, and the species is facing many threats. Therefore, the EU and its member states support the inclusion of the great Indian bustard in Appendix 1 of CMS. Thank you very much, EU. Ecuador. Gracias, señor presidente, por permitirme un, una vez más intervenir. Las poblaciones reducidas de especies amenazadas necesitan acciones rápidas de conservación y los apéndices de la CMS, sobre todo para las inclusiones de especies en el apéndice 1, es una herramienta favorable e importante para cualquier tipo de acción que se desee realizar a favor de nuestras especies migratorias. Por lo tanto, el gobierno de Ecuador, a pesar de no tener a esta especie dentro de la distribución geográfica, pero solo por el hecho de que la CMS es una convención que está vinculada directamente para la conservación de nuestras especies migratorias, el Ecuador apoya la inclusión de esta especie a favor del gobierno de la India. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Ecuador, Senegal. Uh, merci, Monsieur le Président. Nous remercions le, le gouvernement indien de l'inscription de l'Outarte à l'annexe 1. L'Outarte en général est un oiseau fabuleux et en particulier l'Outarte à tête noire, c'est-à-dire l'Outarte indienne, est fortement menacée. Elle fait, elle fait partie des 100 espèces d'oiseaux les plus menacées au monde et ne serait-ce que ça est en considération du fait que il est, elle est qualifié comme être un excellent gibier, il est vraiment, elle est vraiment victime de beaucoup de convoitises. Donc, à ce propos, euh, nous soutenons fortement son inscription à l'annexe 1, qui permettra certainement de sauver la petite population qui existe encore. Merci. Thank you very much, Senegal. Peru. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. En Perú desea apoyar también la propuesta de inclusión de esta especie que está tan amenazada. Eh, esta enmienda ayudará a comprender mejor los movimientos transfronterizos de las aves, además de proteger a la especie de la caza y otros riesgos provocados por las actividades humanas. 
y como dijo también la representante de Senegal, este, la protección que damos eh, a, en esta convención eh, va a servir para preservar la biodiversidad para las futuras generaciones. ¿no? Gracias. Thank you, Peru. Let's take the WCS. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear. Thank you. I'll be very brief. WCS strongly supports the inclusion of the critically endangered Great Indian Bustard in Appendix 1 and urges its adoption today. WCS works with the government and local communities on the species here in India. We urge future strict implementation of measures to mitigate threats such as power line collisions and increased efforts on in situ conservation and recovery of habitats. It is well known that power lines are a major threat to the great Indian bustard. And despite concerns being raised by researchers and government for a long time, actionable steps have not yet been taken to address this issue. We believe there should be a moratorium on building new power lines, windmill, and solar farms in the area until the current populations have recovered or stabilized. And if and when new power lines are being built, it, they must not present a risk for collisions. We hope that real measures are taken for this highly endangered species on the brink of extinction and hope that its inclusion on CMX, CMS Appendix 1 will aid in its recovery. Thank you very much. Thank you, WCS. Bolivia. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Aprovecho para a saludarles y, a, y por esa oportunidad también al gobierno de, de India, ya que esta es la primera participación que está haciendo Bolivia. En este, en este punto quiero hablar a nombre de, de la región que estamos representando, Latinoamérica y, y Caribe, para dar nuestro total apoyo, como decía ya Perú y Ecuador, a, a la inclusión de esta especie y así colaborar muy importantemente en su conservación. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much, uh, the Cobat Foundation. Honorable Chair. Thank you for giving this opportunity. The Corbett Foundation fully supports the proposal of enlisting the Great Indian Bustard in the Appendix 1. Inclusion of the species in Appendix 1 will surely aid in transboundary conservation efforts. Chair, the species is facing threat of collision with power line in India and hunting near the international border areas in Pakistan. Therefore, its enlisting will help in long-term conservation at national and international levels. The Corbett Foundation happily support this proposal. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Corbett Foundation. Somalia. Thank you, Chair, for giving me the floor. Somalia is the first time that we take the floor. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, the hosting government of India, uh, and I would like to support the proposal of India uh, for the bastard uh, to be uh, done or the inculcation of uh, Annex 1. And I hope the decline of the population will came to grow and recover again. Thank you. Thank you, Somalia. YNN. Thank you, Chair. Uh, YNN would like to support that proposal which brings by government of India. And thanks again to Government of India making that GIB as mascot of this uh, COP. And YNN is uh, fully support this proposal and urging all parties to support that proposal to inclusion of GIB in CMS Appendix 1. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, YNN, I see. Uh, okay. Um, I will close the floor with Mauritius. Mauritius, you will be the last. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Mauritius supports the proposal from India. Thank you. Thank you, Mauritius. Um, there are several non party requests for the floor. Kindly submit your uh, statements of support to the Secretariat for inclusion in the report so that we can catch up with time. I now come back to you, the meeting. Do we have any objections to this meeting adopting the proposal to include the Great Indian Bastard in Appendix 1 to the Convention and subsequently recommending the proposal to the plenary for consideration? Uh, 
I see no objections to adoption of this proposal and recommending it plenary for consideration. I take it that this meeting agrees uh, to the proposal. Let me again invite India to introduce document 27.1.5 uh, on the proposal to include the Bengal Florican in Appendix 1 to the Convention. India, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. This is the proposal to include the Bengal Florican, Huberopsis bengalensis bengalensis, in the Appendix 1 of the Convention on Migratory Species. The Bengal florican is a critically endangered species, the number of which, like the great Indian bustard, has dwindled to a precarious situation and is in the brink of extinction. The survival of this threatened species is now ensured by some presence of grassland and the protected areas of the Himalayan foothills in the northern bank of the river Brahmaputra in the state of Assam which has always been the stronghold for the species in India. Population of these species have declined as a result of habitat loss, habitat degradation, and hunting. There is transboundary movement of Bengal florican between India, Nepal, and Bhutan. The species has been listed under Schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act 1972, and it's protected since India's independence. It is listed under CITES Appendix 1 as well. The proposed amendment will help in better understanding about transboundary movement of the birds and protection of the species against hunting and other human-induced mortality risks. Listing of the species in CMS will protect the bird from hunting, power line collision, and habitat loss. This will help in the recovery of the species. India, Chairperson, is also proposing concerted action for Bengal florican with the range states of Bengal florican. Concerted actions from the range countries are needed for conservation of the species during their movements, especially during the non-breeding season. The concerted action include assessing distribution, and population status in the rain states, which also includes Cambodia and Vietnam, understanding seasonal variations in habitat use, identification of major threats to the species, locale specific as well as all the landscape level conservation of the species through community involvement. We request the inclusion of the species in Appendix 1 for saving it from the brink of extinction. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, India. I now invite uh, comments uh, on a proposal to include the Bengal Freudian in Appendix 1 to the Convention as introduced by India. A European Union. Yes, the bet. Thank you. The Bengal florican is a critically endangered species which migrates between India and Nepal and faces various threats. For this reason, the EU and its member states strongly support the inclusion of this species in Appendix 1 of CMS. Thank you. Thank you very much, European Union. I will take Costa Rica. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Costa Rica apoya y agradece al gobierno de la India la propuesta de inclusión de la floricán de Begala por su estado crítico de peligro de extinción e insta a las partes a apoyar la inclusión en el apéndice 1 porque cumple los criterios de inclusión a nivel de sus migraciones transfronterizas. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Thank you, Bangladesh. Uh, uh, thank you. We, let's have now Bangladesh. Thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, I, uh, Bangladesh strongly support the proposal submitted by India. Bengal Fronical on several time was uh, seen in Bangladesh, but it was extinct from Bangladesh uh, from 1882. 
So Bangladesh strongly support India for the conservation of this species and also inclusion of this species in, in the appendix one of CMS. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bangladesh. Let's take Bombay Natural History Society. Thank you, Mr. Chair. A Bombay Natural History Society strongly support inclusion of Bengal Florican in Appendix 1. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Bangladesh. Um, I see lots of requests for the floor. Uh, if they are in support, uh, kindly clear the screen. If the requests for the floor are in support, kindly clear the screen so that I come back to you. Uh, I want to give opportunity to those who have uh, dissenting views. Do we have any party that would like to speak against the proposal by India? I see CIC. Uh, CIC is not a party, but uh, let me take you. Thank you, Chair. Um, it's, it's not dissenting views, so to speak, but um, the CIC would like to thank the Government of India for this proposal. Um, the CIC can only tentatively support the proposal. Um, the species is al already listed in CITES Appendix 1. Uh, it is, as such, classified by OCN as critically endangered with less than 1,000 mature individuals. However, the understanding of the transboundary movement of the birds between Nepal and India is still relatively unclear and would require further research. Thank you. Thank you, CIC. Your comments will be taken note of. I come back to you, the meeting. Do we have any objections to this meeting adopting proposal by India to include Bengal Florican in Appendix 1 to the Convention? Do you have any objections to adoption of the proposal? I do not see any objections. I take it that it is uh, unanimously agreed um, by this meeting to recommend to plenary for adoption, uh, inclusion of Bengal Florican in Appendix 1 of the Convention. Let me now invite a European Union to introduce document 27.1.6 uh, on the inclusion of the literal bastard in Appendix 1 and 2 of the Convention. The European Union. Thank you, Chair. The European Union and its member states have submitted a proposal to list the little bastard tetrix tetrix under both Appendix 1 and Appendix 2 of CMS. The little bustard is a species with palearctic distribution and two geographically separated breeding populations. The western population, found in the European Union and in Morocco, and the eastern population from Turkey, Ukraine, Georgia, and the Russian Federation through Kazakhstan to Kyrgyzstan and northwest China and Iran. Both western and eastern populations have declined dramatically since the 19th century and remain threatened by land reclamation and agricultural intensification over most of their range. Illegal killing is also a problem in the eastern population. The European population has a declining trend of up to 40% over three generations, and recent national censuses in Iberia indicate overall declines of over 50% in 10 years. Resolution 11.33 on guidelines for assessing listing proposals to the CMS resolves that by virtue of the precautionary approach and in case of uncertainty regarding the status of a species, the parties shall act in the best interest of the conservation of the species concerned. And when considering proposals to amend Appendix 1 or 2, adopt measures that are proportionate to the anticipated risks to the species. Based on these grounds, we believe that the little bustard merits inclusion on both Appendix 1 and Appendix 2 of the Convention. This will help the protection of grasslands, steppes, and low-intensity agricultural areas that constitute the main habitat of this species. I would also note that the Scientific Council recommended this proposal for adoption. Thank you. Thank you very much, EU. I now invite comments on uh, document 27.1.6 as introduced by European Union. India. 
Thank you, Chair. Uh, India supports the proposal uh, proposed by the European Union and its member states, and this uh, for listing little bastard in Appendix One and Two of the Convention. Uh, it's a near-threatened species, and it needs support from the Convention, and so that the international cooperation and facilitation will further improve the status of this species. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, India. Mongolia. Thank you, Chair. Make, um, to save some time, um, uh, the, the support uh, the statement is, support statement is going to deliver on behalf of Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, and Mongolia. The four countries supports um, EU proposal of um, Little Bastard on Appendix 1 and 2, and considering the Asian population, it, is, uh, it seems it's need to have uh, better scientific studies and an um, active uh, consolidated uh, conservation actions as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mongolia. Costa Rica followed by Peru. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Costa Rica, aunque está fuera del área de distribución de la especie, agradece a la Unión Europea el esfuerzo de presentar la propuesta y vemos que cumple con los criterios de inclusión en el apéndice 1 y 2 y suma a lo que la CMS está promulgando en el mundo, que es la conservación de las especies migratorias. E instamos a todas las partes a apoyar la propuesta de inclusión en los dos apéndices. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Thank you, Costa Rica, Perú. Gracias, señor presidente. El Perú también desea apoyar eh, la propuesta realizada por la Unión Europea y felicitarla por la misma. Eh, creemos también que contribuye a cumplir los objetivos de esta convención al cumplir esta propuesta con los criterios para su inclusión eh, este, en los apéndices propuestos y eh, hacer más corto nada más, a, a, instamos también a otros países a que apoyen esta propuesta. Gracias. Thank you, Peru. Let's take Iraq. Thank you, Chair. We support this proposal to conserve these beautiful wild bears which suffer of Ill illegal killing and losing habitat. Thank you, Iraq, for being brief. Uh, YNN. Chair, mm, YNN would like to uh, support this proposal which is made by uh, you. Thank you. Thank you all uh, for your positive comments. I now come back to the meeting. Do we have any objection to this meeting adopting the proposal by European Union to include the little bastard in Appendix 1 and 2 to the Convention? Do we have any objection to this meeting adopting the proposal made by European Union to include the little bastard in Appendix 1 and 2 of the Convention? I do not see any objections. I take it that this meeting agrees uh, that we recommend plenary for consideration the proposal to include the little bastard in Appendix 1 and 2 to the Convention as proposed by European Union. I will now <coughs> invite uh, one of the proponents uh, between New Zealand, Australia, and Chile to introduce 20, document 27.1.7 uh, on inclusion of the Antipodian albatross in Appendix 1 to the Convention. New Zealand. Thank you, Chair. New Zealand, Australia, and Chile have submitted a proposal to list Antipodian albatross on Appendix 1 of CMS. The proposal covers both subspecies of Antipodean albatross. The Antipodean albatross, or Toroa, is a Taonga species to Māori, New Zealand's indigenous people. This means it has special cultural significance and importance to Māori. Ngaitahu is the principal indigenous tribe of the southern region of New Zealand where the Antipodean albatross, or Toroa, breed. Ngaitahu was involved in the development of this proposal. 
The IUC in red list assessment lists in Tibetan albatross as endangered. Both subspecies have undergone substantial population declines since 2004. The current rate of decline, if it continues, could lead to functional extinction of the species in the next 20 to 30 years. Antipodean albatross breeds on four island groups off southern New Zealand. Both subspecies migrate beyond New Zealand in the high seas and other jurisdictions from the coast of Australia to Chile. The greatest risk to this species is believed to be from pelagic longline fishing operations in the South Pacific, where these birds can be caught and drowned on fishing hooks. Engagement with regional fisheries management organisations, which regulate high seas fishing operations, will be critical for preventing Antipodean albatross from declining to extinction. An Appendix 1 listing on CMS would complement other New Zealand, Australian and Chilean and international efforts to conserve Antipodean albatross, including through the agreement on the conservation of albatrosses and petrels, where it is included as one of nine priority species. The listing would create an obligation on CMS parties to impose strict protection measures for the species, including on their flagged vessels operating on the high seas. It would increase international awareness and catalyse international cooperation between states, including through regional fisheries management organisations. New Zealand undertook widespread consultation with range states and took all comments received into account prior to submitting the proposal. The proposal was considered by the Scientific Council, which recommended it for adoption. The listing proposal is accompanied by a concerted action outlining urgent actions needed to recover the species. We will introduce this under Agenda Item 28. We call on parties to support this proposal. Thank you. Thank you, New Zealand. I recognise Australia. I understand Australia, you are a proponent, so kindly use strictly one minute. <laughs> uh, thank you, Chair. Um, Australia co-sponsored the nomination of the Antipodean albatross on Appendix 1 of the Convention. We'd also like to thank the New Zealand Government for the preparation of the nomination and for also undertaking extensive and broad consultation. Australia, as a range state for the albatross, supports the listing on Appendix 1. Thank you. Thank you, Australia. I will now open the floor for comments uh, on the proposal outside the proponents. I recognize Uruguay. Gracias, señor presidente. Uruguay, en nombre de los estados de la región de América Central, del Sur y Caribe, apoya fuertemente esta propuesta de enmienda de Omedea Antipodenses para el apéndice 1 de la CMS. Como sabemos, esta ave emblemática migratoria que tiene vida pelágica enfrenta una serie de problemas de, de conservación, entre las que se han citado, la, por ejemplo, los problemas de sus características biológicas de madurez sexual tardía que crían cada dos años y a su vez eh, los riesgos de captura incidental que, que ocurre frecuentemente en las pesquerías de, de palangres. Asimismo se ven afectadas también en sus islas por la afectación que ocurre por los animales exóticos introducidos que depredan estos sitios. Corpende destacar que Diomedea Antipodensis, como se dijo, está listada en el anexo 1 del del ACAP, acuerdo que no solo los proponentes, Australia, Nueva Zelanda y Chile son estados parte, sino que también Argentina, Brasil, Ecuador, Perú, Uruguay, somos parte del mismo. Por lo tanto, Uruguay, en nombre de los países de la región de América Central del Sur, del Sur y el Caribe, apoya fuertemente esta propuesta y recomienda su aprobación. Gracias, señor Presidente. Thank you very much, Uruguay, European Union. Thank you. The EU and its member states support the inclusion of the Antipodean albatross on Appendix 1 of CMS. The Antipodean albatross is globally endangered and both subspecies are migratory in the sense of CMS. Apart from threats at breeding sites, albatrosses are threatened by bycatch and plastic pollution in high seas areas. So listing on Appendix 1 will help to strengthen international cooperation in conservation activities. 
Thank you very much. EU, India. Thank you, Chair. India supports the proposal moved by New Zealand, Australia and Chile for inclusion of the antipodean albatross in Appendix 1 of the Convention. This, this move will help the endangered species to recover in its habitat and improve the status. Thank you. Thank you, India. We shall take a cup. Akap, take the floor, please. Sorry, sorry, Madam Chair. Um, yes, ACAP strongly supports the proposal by New Zealand, Chile, and Australia, who are all ACAP parties. The Antipodean albatross has been listed on Annex 1 of the agreement since 2004, the year ACAP came into force, and the Antipodes island population has been an ACAP high priority population since 2017, recognizing the rapid decline of this population due to bycatch. This species, endemic to New Zealand subantarctic islands, forages to the west in Australian waters and east as far as Chile, and crosses waters beyond national jurisdictions, resulting in an overlap with five RFMOs, Regional Fisheries Management Organizations, as well as a number of range states. The proposed listing would further strengthen cooperation between ACAP, RFMOs, range states, and other concerned parties to improve the uptake and effectiveness of bycatch mitigation measures. This listing will give ACAP the opportunity to engage more broadly with CMS parties in fora such as RFMOs and elsewhere to advocate for effective management of threats and implementation of measures to reduce the high mortality rate currently driving the decline of the species. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, ACAP. We shall take YNN. Thank you, Chair, once again. Uh, YNN is like to support this document fully, which is being by New Zealand, Australia, and Chile. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, <clears throat> all of you, for your positive comments. I come back to the meeting. Uh, whether we have any objections to this meeting, adopting proposal made by New Zealand, Australia, and Chile, to include Antipodean albatross in Appendix 1 to the Convention. Do you have any objections to this meeting adopting the proposal and recommending it plenarily for consideration? I do not see any objections. I take it that this meeting unanimously agrees uh, that uh, plenary will consider inclusion of antipodi and albatross in Appendix 1 to the Convention. Let me invite the meeting to look at uh, document 27.1.8, Rev 2, uh, just to alert you that there has been slight uh, revision uh, in document 27.1.8, we now have a REV2 uh, with just a correction of uh, range states. So it's a small correction uh, of the range states. I now invite Brazil to introduce document 27.1.8, REV2, on inclusion of oceanic white tip shark in Appendix 1 to the Convention. Brazil, please. Thank you, Chair. The oceanic white tip shark is one of the most widespread shark species ranging from all tropical and subtropical waters. It is a species valued for its fins and meat, and for this reason it has been targeted directly and indirectly by different types of fishing operations. Latest IUCN assessments 
show that steep population declines have occurred in all oceans, with significant historical declines also reported across its range. Both the IUCN and the government of Brazil classify the species as critically endangered. ICAT itself recognizes this as a matter of concern, and Brazil adopted the recommendations suggested by this committee in 2013. Among the main recommendations, we highlight the prohibition of the retention, landing, and commerce of this species in Brazilian territory. The oceanic white-tip shark exhibits conservative life history parameters, such as low productivity and slow recovery from overexploitation. A listing on Appendix 1 of CMS would engage parties to strictly protect the species, conserve and restore their habitats, mitigate obstacles to their migration, and control other factors that might endanger them. Thank you. Thank you, Brazil. I now invite the floor to discuss a proposal made by Brazil to include the ocean white tip shark in Appendix 1 to the Convention. And I see Costa Rica. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Costa Rica, Perú y Argentina agradecen al gobierno de Brasil el esfuerzo de presentar la propuesta de incluir el tiburón oceánico de Punta Blanca en el apéndice 1. Los tiburones oceánicos de Punta Blanca son extremadamente vulnerables a la sobrepesca y se han documentado fuertes descensos en la abundancia de tiburones oceánicos en todos los océanos. En el 2019 fueron listados como en peligro crítico por la UICN en base a una estimación de reducción de más del 98% de la población mundial. Por lo tanto, estamos a las partes de la CMS a prohibir toda retención de tiburones oceánicos y participar en, en iniciativas perdón, de recuperación regional para la especie. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Thank you, Costa Rica, Perú and Argentina. Let's take Sri Lanka. Thank you, Chair. Sri Lanka fully supports the listing of oceanic white tip shark on Appendix D of 1 of CMS. Given the strong decline in the ocean, Indian Ocean, Department of Fisheries in Sri Lanka has already taken steps to fully prohibit the capture of oceanic white tip shark by the fisheries of fisheries in a few years ago. While recognizing that migratory status, we are we urge other countries to join and support this listing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Sri Lanka. A European Union. The EU and its member states support inclusion of the oceanic white tip shark in Appendix 1 of CMS. The proposal provides evidence of cyclical and predictable movement of oceanic white ship sharks. Moreover, we note that the latest red list assessment for this species classifies oceanic white tip shark as critically endangered, thus providing greater justification for its inclusion on Appendix 1. Since the species is threatened mainly by overfishing and bycatch, and given that this species has already been listed as a no retention species by all tuna regional fisheries management organizations, the species would certainly benefit from being included on Appendix 1. We believe the proposal will enhance international cooperation and appropriate conservation measures, thus helping reverse declining population trends and help ensure species survival. Thank you, European Union, India. Thank you, Chair. This species is occurs in India and observed as one of the important catch among the shark landed in India. And further, IUCN also assessed this species as critically endangered. And India support this proposal of Brazil as it would benefit recovery of this species. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, India. Israel. Thank you, sir. Very briefly, Chair, we support this proposal. All shark species are fully protected in Israel and have been for many years, and we've been always very much in favor of steps that will increase protection of the shark species. Thank you. Thank you, Israel. We shall now take New Zealand. Thank you, Chair. As a range state for oceanic white tip shark, New Zealand would like to thank Brazil for submitting this proposal to list the species on Appendix 1 of the Convention. Noting the recently updated IUCN red list classification of critically endangered, New Zealand considers oceanic white tip shark 
to meet the Appendix 1 listing criteria and supports this proposal. We note that alongside this CMS listing, it is critical that parties and non-parties continue working domestically and through regional fisheries management organisations to ensure effective laws are put in place to reduce illegal targeting and bycatch in trade of this species, as well as strong and effective monitoring and compliance mechanisms. We hope this listing will facilitate increased international cooperation for this species. Thank you. Thank you, New Zealand. Senegal. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. L'espèce requin océanique, comme vous le savez, est déjà inscrite dans les annexes de la CITES, annexe 1 du MOU Shark. C'est une espèce qui a été évaluée, comme on l'a dit tantôt, en danger critique d'extinction. Donc le Sénégal soutient fortement cette inscription de ce requin dans l'annexe 1 de la CMS. Merci. Thank you very much, Senegal. Uh, we haven't had any uh, dissenting party. I come back to you, the meeting. Do we have any objections to this meeting, adopting the proposal made by Brazil to include ocean white tip shark in Appendix 1 to the Convention? I repeat, do we have any party opposed to the proposal made by Brazil to include the oceanic white tip shark in Appendix 1 to the Convention. I see no objection. I take it that this meeting agrees unanimously that we recommend to plenary for consideration the proposal by Brazil to include oceanic white tip shark in Appendix 1 to the Convention. Let me invite Brazil once again to introduce document 27.1.9A on the inclusion of smooth hammerhead shark in Appendix 2 to the Convention. Brazil, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the smooth hammerhead shark is a circumglobal species worldwide distributed in temperate to tropical waters. In the southwestern Atlantic, the smooth hammerhead range extends from Brazil to southern Argentina. Globally, it was assessed as vulnerable using IUCN criteria. In Brazil, smooth hammerheads are targeted by artisanal and industrial fisheries due to its highly priced fins and the meat of pups and juveniles are also marketed fresh by the fishmongers in southeast Brazilian states. The species has an unfavorable conservation status because intense fishing mortality over pups is caused by gill nets and thralls operated on shallow waters and over juveniles along the continental shelf. Additionally, adults are exploited by drift nets and long lines along the shelf border and slope. Therefore, the smooth hammerhead is exploited at all life stages and throughout their migratory circuit. Including the smooth hammerhead in the CMS Appendix 2 would help to improve cooperation between Brazil, Uruguay and Argentina with respect to fishing regulations like non-fishing zones and control over the international fin market. Additionally, we would like to declare that we also support the European Union's proposal to include the global population of the smooth hammerhead in Appendix 2. Thank you. Thank you, Brazil. I understand uh, the next proposal from the European Union uh, is a proposal to, that includes uh, the entire scope of the proposal by Brazil. So let me invite the European Union to introduce document 27.1.9b so that we can uh, discuss them together. Both of them relate to the same species, but they differ in the scope of application. So, European Union. 
Thank you, Chair. Indeed, um, the European Union and its member states would welcome broad support of their proposal to include the full global population of smooth hammerhead shark in Appendix 2 of CMS. As we've heard from our Brazilian colleague, the smooth hammerhead shark is a highly migratory species. It's a widespread semi-pelagic shark with a widespread distribution ranging from temperate to tropical seas. The global red list assessment classifies the species as vulnerable, while the Brazilian population is critically endangered. The Scientific Council of CMS in principle supported the inclusion of the smooth hammerhead shark in Appendix 2, but raised some questions concerning the conservation status and migration patterns of the population in Australia. Sorry. The European Union and its member states prepared additional synthesis and updates of the migratory nature, conservation, and population status of this species by providing further information regarding the Australian population and its migratory nature. This is addendum two to the proposal. Document 27.1, addendum two, contains the advice of the IUCN Shark Specialist Group and the Advisory Committee of the Sharks MLU. These are the two main expert bodies concerning sharks and both support the listing proposal. Regarding the conservation status, the Advisory Committee of the Sharks MOU states that the observed and inferred declines in smooth hammerhead populations, which are still ongoing due to continued fishing pressure, have warranted it eligible for IUCN vulnerable status globally. Furthermore, the groups both conclude that the species meets the criteria for migratory, and this is reflected in the addendum. In fact, based on available data, this species is considered highly mobile with recorded movements of over 6,600 kilometers. Furthermore, mature females show a clear migration along coastal waters to give birth in the waters of Australia and New Zealand, which indicates that mature female smooth hammerhead sharks undergo seasonable, seasonal migrations across jurisdictional boundaries as part of their reproductive behavior, which makes these migrations significant to the whole population. This is further substantiated by the fact that the genetic composition of the shark is the same in Australian and New Zealand waters. Populations of smooth hammerhead shark are threatened mainly by intense fishing activities as hammerhead have a high bycatch mortality as well as illegal fishing because of the high value of their fins. Therefore, the global population of smooth hammerhead shark would greatly benefit from inclusion of Appendix 2 of CMS. We believe this proposal will lead to improvement in international cooperation and species-specific data collection to improve national and regional management and facilitate collaboration between states for this species. In addition, it should be noted that since December of 2018, the global population of this species is already listed in Annex 1 of the Sharks MOU. This listing on the Sharks MOU was agreed based on exactly the same evidence and justification which we have submitted with this present proposal for inclusion of that same global population also on Appendix 2 of the Convention. Thank you. Thank you, EU. <coughs> I would like to propose um, to open the floor with guidance that uh, when you take the floor, uh, indicate whether you prefer the inclusion of regional population or global population. So as you make your intervention, make it clear which proposal uh, you prefer so that we gauge uh, the uh, intentions of, uh, of the meeting and then we, we see how to move forward. So I will open the floor and take India. Thank you, Chair. In India is also a range country of smooth hammerhead shark. And India support the global population. And the proposal submitted by Brazil as well as European Union and its member states. So India strongly support the proposal. Thank you. Thank you, India. Ecuador. Gracias, señor presidente. Ecuador, you have the floor. Siendo conscientes 
que la población del tiburón martillo liso es una especie que se encuentra listada en la lista roja de la UCN como vulnerable a la extinción mundial, donde hay datos disponibles, las poblaciones continúan disminuyendo y por lo tanto la especie claramente necesita un manejo coordinado. Cabe indicar que en el gobierno de Ecuador contamos con herramientas que son instrumentos legales mediante un acuerdo ministerial número 116 para la protección de las especies que presentan incidencias con pesquerías. Es así que recordemos que el, dos especies de firna ya fueron incluidos en la COP del 2014 y estas de aquí, asimismo como la que el día de hoy se está proponiendo, que es el tiburón liso, ya están dentro del memorándum de entendimiento. Por lo tanto, el Ecuador está de acuerdo para la inclusión de la especie a nivel mundial. Senegal. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Comme l'a si bien dit l'Équateur tout à l'heure, euh, la présentation de ces deux propositions par le Brésil et l'Union européenne montre que c'est la population mondiale du requin-marteau euh, commun qui doit être protégée. Et donc, euh, compte tenu de ce qui précède, nous soutenons fortement cette proposition d'inscription du requin-marteau dans l'annexe 2 de la CMS par les deux pays, proposé par les deux pays. Thank you very much. Uh, please, parties, make it clear on whether you are in for regional listing or global population. Gambia. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kia. Uh, the Gambia support the global listing of the smooth hammerhead sack proposed by EU for inclusion in Appendix 2. Full text will be submitted to the Secretariat. Thank you. Australia, you have the floor. Australia. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Australia supports the Appendix 2 listing of the regional population as submitted by the Government of Brazil. But I've got some comments to make about the EU proposal for a global listing. As one of the range states for smooth hammerhead, it is disappointing that Australia was not consulted on this proposal before its submission. If we had been consulted, we would have been able to provide a great deal of information on this species, which would have considerably assisted in presenting a more accurate listing proposal for parties' consideration. Australia would also note that consultation, particularly with range states, prior to the submission of a listing proposal, is fundamental in ensuring support and collaboration on species where it's needed. The EU has emphasised to us that their internal approval and coordination processes do not allow for consultation prior to submission of proposals. We have heard from many parties at previous COPs on the importance of consulting with range states before submitting a proposal, but unfortunately it continues to be an issue. Interestingly, we have since become aware that the EU conducted extensive discussion with non-EU range states for the Little Bustard proposal prior to the submission. We are puzzled as to why Australia wasn't consulted on any of the EU listing proposals. Nonetheless, the Convention has a process in place to allow for party and scientific council comments on listing proposals that have been submitted for consideration at conferences of the parties. Australia submitted extensive comments on the EU nomination under Article 10, Paragraph 3 of the Convention, and subsequently participated in the Sessional Committee discussion and recommendations on all listing proposals submitted for discussion at this COP. Science is on Australia's side. In fact, the listing proposal acknowledges that populations are isolated between, and sometimes within, ocean basins. 
The sessional committee reviewed the science and recommended that the Australian population of smooth hammerhead be excluded as it does not meet the definition of migratory under the Convention. In response to the Scientific Council comments, the EU addendum relied upon by the EU in their sorry, the paper relied upon by the EU in their addendum, France's 2016, relates to a New Zealand smooth hammerhead tagging study. This study tagged five sharks, all juveniles, in New Zealand waters. None of these sharks left New Zealand waters. Many scientific papers and scientists will use the term migratory. In many instances, that term is being used interchangeably for wide-ranging movements or dispersal activity. The term is usually not used in the correct context of the CNS definition of migratory, which is that a species must make predictable and cyclical movements across jurisdictional boundaries. Australia is a very large island continent. In relation to smooth hammerhead, latitudinal movements north-south of the type we've heard from our Brazilian counterpart, when applied to Australia, would rarely take animals outside of Australian waters. And this was acknowledged in the EU addendum. Longitudinal movements, that is inshore to offshore, could possibly place animals outside Australian waters. But distance movements have not been demonstrated to be great enough to move animals from Australian waters through the high seas and into another country's jurisdiction. The nearest temperate water country to Australia is New Zealand. New Zealand is over 2,000 kilometres away with a 4,000 metre deep ocean basin between our two countries. For scale, this is further than moving from London to North Africa. When dealing with a geographically isolated population, such as smooth hammerhead within Australian waters, it is unclear from the EU nomination or from the EU addendum which other jurisdiction Australia should be cooperating with under the Convention to conserve Australia's smooth hammerhead population. Australia has a strong track record in ocean governance and shark conservation, and Australia queries why the EU is trying to impose international cooperation on Australia when there's no other identified party that shares our population. It should be noted that the Scientific Council reviewed the science contained in the proposal, in addition to that provided by parties and other bodies, including the Sharks MOU Advisory Committee. Based on the science, the Scientific Council generally supported the inclusion of the global population in Appendix 2, except for the Australian population, which was not considered to meet the criteria for migratory under the Convention. The Scientific Council recommended excluding the Australian population from the EU proposal. This Convention on Migratory Species is predicated on international cooperation to conserve truly migratory species. The continued lack of consultation by some parties and the unwillingness to engage with other parties' perspectives undermines the spirit of this Convention. The continued inclusion of species on the appendices that are not eligible also undermines the credibility of the Convention, not just to parties, but also to prospective parties looking at our work from outside. As such, Australia remains resolutely opposed to the inclusion of the Australian population of smooth hammerhead. On Appendix 2, we request the proposal be varied so as to exclude the Australian population from Appendix 2 listing for this species, consistent with the Scientific Council recommendations. Thank you. Thank you, Australia. I see there is a, a, a long list of requests for the floor. Um, Australia proposes uh, amendment of uh, the proposal to exclude the Australian population. Um, maybe we can discuss that. Can we first clear the, the screen? Yeah, Australia proposes to exclude its population uh, from the proposal. Let me hear the views of other parties on Australia's uh, proposal. Israel? 
Thank you, Chair. Um, rule 21, subparagraph 3 of the Rules of Procedure allows any representative to propose an amendment to a proposal to reduce its scope. And in this case, uh, Australia has presented, in our mind, a justified um, proposal to amend this uh, EU proposal based on the Scientific Council's uh, recommendation. And we would support, then, this uh, amended proposal by the EU. EU, but the proposal by the EU, including the amendment by Australia. Thank you, Israel. Uh, Israel uh, supports the proposal with the reduction in scope. Let's take Bangladesh. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is the first time I'm taking the floor. Uh, this highly migratory species with a widespread distribution is also occurs in the Bangladesh coastal areas. And this species is protected under the Wildlife Conservation Security Act 2005 and protected in Schedule 1. And this species, uh, the main threat of, to the species are the gillnet and bottom uh, trawler activities causing the mortality of pup and juveniles and also traded for the high value of fin. So we strongly uh, supported uh, the proposal by EU and uh, uh, strongly support for the including uh, as a glo global population for the inclusion of Appendix 2. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And congratulate you, uh, Amy. Thanks. Thank you, Bangladesh. Let's take Kudiva. Oui, euh, merci, Monsieur le Président. C'est la première fois que la Côte d'Ivoire prend, euh, prend la parole. Euh, nous remercions le gouvernement indien pour l'organisation euh, de cette COP. Euh, nous soutenons euh, euh, pleinement la proposition euh, de l'Union européenne qui est, euh, qui est complète en ce qui concerne. Euh, la conservation euh, de ces requins, euh, des requins bateaux. Donc nous, sou nous soutenons euh, fortement leur euh, le proposition à l'inscription à la NSD. Je vous remercie. Thank you, Kudeva. Uh, let me guide the meeting that uh, we have uh, a proposal for amendment of EU proposal for reduction in scope to exclude the population of Australia. So when you take the floor, kindly discuss that proposal to reduce the scope of EU proposal. Indicate your acceptance or non-acceptance uh, of reduction of the scope of EU proposal. Nore? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, we too welcome this proposal, but we also uh, support uh, the amendment as suggested by Australia. Thank you. Thank you, Nori. Senegal. Le Sénégal soutient uh, la proposition de l'UE pour le classement de la population mondiale sans restriction. Let me get it clear from you, Senegal. Are you opposed to the amended proposal? Oui. Do you oppose it? Did you oui. 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 Nigeria. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This smooth hammerhead shark has made criteria for listing. Therefore, Nigeria supports the global inclusion of this species in Appendix 2 of the Convention. Now we are opposed to the amendment. Thank you, Nigeria. Thank you, Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Saudi Arabia, being a range state for this species, would like to uh, uh, support uh, the amended uh, proposal. Thank you. Let me take a European Union. A European Union. 
Yes, thank you. I mean, I, we have already responded to the comments of Australia in our amendment. We do not, our addendum to the proposal, we do not support their amendment to our proposal. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we shall have to resolve this. We have about uh, 14 minutes. I hope that uh, we shall resolve it. Um, I want to suggest that um, we put the amended proposal to a vote. Um, if it passes, we shall be home and dry. If it fails, uh, we shall take it that the global listing, of course, uh, will have been preferred by you. So let me invite the Secretariat to guide regarding the rules of procedure for voting. Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, we will first be voting on whether to accept the amendment as proposed by Australia. So a yes vote would be to exclude the Australian proposal from the proposal as submitted by the European Union. Before we get to that vote, however, I would like to turn it over to the European Union to explain whether the EU will be voting on behalf of its member states or whether the member states will vote individually. EU. Yes, thank you. The EU will be voting on behalf of its member states. And I would recall that um, under the terms of the withdrawal agreement between the EU and the UK, that the UK is still considered a part of the EU in the context of international agreements throughout the transition period that extends to the end of this year. So we will be voting with 28 votes. Israel, you have the floor. Thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt the voting procedure. Just a point of clarification. Is a no vote a vote against listing the species, or is a no vote against the amendment. Uh, we would seek clarification, please. What is the implication of a no vote? Like the Secretariat explained, we are going to vote on uh, amendment of the proposal first. So a no vote means you've rejected the reduction in scope, and therefore you've opted for uh, global listing, but that will be a different motion altogether. They can't be taken at the same time. What we shall be voting on is uh, the reduction in scope, the proposal for reduction in scope, and a no would mean you are rejecting the reduction in scope. A yes would mean you are accepting the proposal by European Union with amendment of Australia, supported by uh, Israel, Norway, and uh, others. Does that clarify the matter, Israel? I see no ding, so it is fine. Can we confirm uh, the credentials uh, on how many votes we expect? As reported by the Credentials Committee, um, we have received 63 credentials, and none of those countries are in arrears at the moment. So we will be able uh, to receive votes from 63 parties. So we shall move uh, to a vote. Um, may I request the technical team to beam the, yeah, the screen? And just for clarification, when the chair calls for a vote, you will press your speak button uh, to indicate whether you are voting first yes for the amendment as 
proposed by Australia, and then the chair will call for a second vote, asking whether you are voting against no for the amended amendment. Thank you. Just to add that uh, the decision will require two-thirds majority uh, of uh, the expected votes as per credentials uh, accredited to this meeting. And uh, just a final clarification, a yes would mean you press your mic to request for a flop. That would mean you are voting yes when I make the first call for voting. Then later on we shall call the second call for voting for the no. So we are going to start with those parties uh, that support the reduction in scope of the EU proposal, I repeat, we are going to vote, and the vote that we shall start with is for parties to indicate by pressing the button uh, to request for the floor, that would indicate that you support the reduction in scope of the proposal by EU as proposed by Australia and supported by others. So those in favor of the proposal by Australia to reduce the scope, please press your buttons. So how many, those are eight votes. Okay, final call, final call, final call. Those in support of Australian proposal, please press your buttons. This is a final call. Because I see a swing in the, a swing in the list, we must, uh, we must have time to close the voting. It can't remain swinging. So we are going to give it two minutes. Two minutes and I will time. Only two minutes to close the... All right, we have uh, 12 votes, uh, but out of the 12 votes, there are some countries which are ineligible to vote because their credentials, they don't have uh, valid credentials at this meeting, and that's uh, Iswatini, Iraq, 
and the Philippines. So Iswatini, Iraq and the Philippines do not have a right to vote in this meeting because their credentials are not yet approved by the credentials committee and therefore they are ineligible to vote. So that leaves us with uh, nine votes for the proposal. The Secretary, you can be calculating the percentages. Uh, we shall come back to that. So technicians clear the, clear the screen, yes. We shall now go for those who are opposed. Those who are opposed to the Australian proposal to reduce the scope, press the buttons. If you are a member of EU, please do not press the button because EU is voting as a bloc. Okay. We are confirming credentials, so kindly uh, bear with us. I'm made to understand that Mozambique, Bangladesh, and Ecuador do not have approved credentials, and therefore their votes uh, do not count. So kindly remove Mozambique, Bangladesh, and Ecuador. All right. All right, um, so those four uh, were those four, Secretariat, please. Those four 
the previous uh, vote had how many? Nine? Eight. Okay, the previous vote had eight votes, and uh, the, the no vote has uh, 20 plus 28, that's uh, 48. That's 48. So the yes vote is less than two thirds, so the proposal fails. The proposal to reduce the scope of EU proposal fails on the lack of uh, two-thirds majority to pass. So we shall clear the screen as technicians. We shall now move uh, to vote on the substantive proposal by EU and uh, Australia wants the floor. Australia, please. The Chair, could we just get clarification on the number of votes for the amendment? The number of votes for the amendment were eight. Huh? How many are they? I confirm that the yes uh, vote had nine, nine votes, and the no vote had uh, 48. Um, perhaps we can take the third vote of abstention before we take uh, the next round of voting. Any countries that are abstaining from voting on the Australian proposal, place the buttons, abstentions. Because abstentions will help us to calculate the percentage. So, all right. There are five. Oh, okay. Those that absconded from, uh, that abstained from voting either yes or no, let's have them on record as well. Okay, there are five. So abstentions are five. Uh, again, just to clarify that the proposal fails on lack of uh, two-thirds uh, majority to make the decision. So we shall proceed uh, to the substantive proposal now. Technicians clear the screen. Argentina, are you asking for the floor? Okay, good. Let's move to voting on the EU proposal, the original proposal. So, again, like we did, those four, the original EU proposal, will vote yes by requesting for the floor. And then later on after that, we shall call for those against. Uh, they will also vote by requesting for the floor. And thereafter, we ask for those that are abstaining. They will again also be asked to request for the floor. So let's start with uh, those for the original EU proposal. Press the buttons. Israel has a point of order. You have the floor, Israel. We would have to first clear the the floor again, 
you have to first clear the screen before you can speak. Israel will take the floor. Israel? Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. I apologize for interrupting the order, but again, there are two proposals for this species, and the rules of procedure require that they're presented in the order that they were received. And it's also not clear if we vote against the EU proposal, what happens then with the Brazil proposal, or if we want only the Brazil proposal and not the global proposal. So. Um, we would see clarification on the order of the votes, whether the Brazil proposal shouldn't come first before the EU proposal. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Israel. Uh, EU, the EU Hold it. On the 18th of September, Brazil on the 19th. Thank you, Israel. Uh, our rules of procedure provide for uh, voting on a proposal that was received first. Uh, I confirm that the EU proposal was received on 18th, and the Brazil proposal was received on 19th. So we shall be in order with our rules of procedure to start with the EU. But just to add that uh, the EU proposal includes the entire scope of the Brazil proposal. So when we finish voting on the EU proposal, depending on the outcome, if it is voted yes, we do not need to vote on the Brazil proposal. So does that clarify? Yes, I see nodding. So I think we are good to go. OK. So we shall take the vote. Those in favor of EU original proposal to list the global population uh, vote by asking for the floor. Those who do not have credentials, please kindly don't vote so that uh, we don't have to calculate and check. We are voting for the EU proposal for the yes to the proposal. So we conclude that uh, the first vote for the yes has um, 59 votes. That is uh, 31 uh, plus uh, 28. That makes uh, 59 votes. So the yes vote is 59. We have confirmed the credentials, and we do confirm that the 59 votes 
uh, or with valid credentials. Okay. All right, clear the screens. Those opposed to the proposal by EU, the original proposal, please vote. Okay, we have one. Clear the screen. Those abstaining from voting indicate you are abstaining. Those abstaining from the vote, please indicate so. The abstentions are three, so we take it that uh, by two-thirds majority, this meeting adopts the original proposal as submitted by EU. It is so decided. Just to summarize the outcome of uh, the second vote, I had uh, announced uh, Okay, uh, there is some slight amendment to the votes announced in the first vote on amendment of the proposal. Uh, Somalia was erroneously included on the no vote. So the no vote is 47 instead of 48, uh, and that does not change the decision, but just to be transparent and have the record corrected that the no vote against the amendment of EU proposal uh, made by Australia, the no vote had 47 votes and not 48 as earlier uh, displayed because uh, we have since excluded Somalia. So for purposes of the record, it is 47 for the no and not 48. And the decision remains the same. Thank you. We are already past uh, lunch time, and uh, thank you very much, uh, interpreters, for your indulgence. Let me invite the Secretariat to make administrative announcements, and then we adjourn.
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a reminder, the Budget Committee will be meeting during the lunch hour at the place where it normally meets. In addition, the Working Group on COP appointed counselors will be meeting during the lunch break as well in seminar, seminar Hall 2, which is the room just across the hallway here in this building. Thank you. I see Australia wants the floor. The meeting is not yet adjourned, the distinguished delegates. The chair hasn't adjourned this meeting. I, I recognize request for the floor by Australia. Thank you, Chair. Just in relation to the um, friends of the chair group for the copper appointed councillors, um, now that school sharks being pushed over till after lunch, I just request that that meeting, if it occurs at lunch, could occur in the second half of lunch, so from 2.30 to 3, if that suits people. Thank you. You've heard the proposal. Uh, those interested in the discussion uh, of review of nominations for COP-appointed uh, COP councillors, the meeting will start at 2.30. 2.30. Please take note. I see request for the floor by Bolivia. Bolivia, do you have a problem? Sí, eh, estimado Presidente, solo queremos hacer una observación eh, que se ha venido repitiendo. Es la observación viene de parte de toda la parte... Eh, Latinoamérica y el Caribe, en referencia a, a los documentos que están nuevamente en la página, que no, no han sido correctamente traducidos, es una preocupación que tenemos, o inmediatamente colocados. Entonces, pediríamos una vez más que se tome en cuenta este, este tema. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Bolivia. I take that very, very serious uh, point of concern, and uh, I will take it uh, up with the Secretariat to ensure that uh, all the translations are fully done. Thank you very much. I adjourn the meeting. <laughs>